Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to learn how to make a virtual joystick for your phone games, just like this one. It's going to be fairly simple, it's not too bad. We're going to be making some UIs, and uh, if I wasn't upside down from the camera, I could actually save this ball, but uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Anyway guys, let's get started. Alright, so let's take a look at what we have. So. We have a ball over here that is moved using the input.getAxis horizontal and also vertical. I'm moving the ball using my keyboard, so the WASD keys. But now, what if I wanted to do that on my phone? Well, I would need some kind of joystick in there. So, uh, in order to do that, I am going to start by creating myself some UI. So, I'll go here in the R key and also um, I'm going to right click. UI and I'm going to create an image. Just for now, I mean, we're going to start with an image. I'm going to make my scene 2D. Make sure I anchor this uh, bottom right. So you click here and you also hold Shift and click again. Now it is anchored bottom right. If I move it at zero, it's going to be uh, anchored here at the bottom of the screen. I'm also going to make the width 250 by 250. Make it something like that for now and then assign it a sprite. Since I'm a little bit, um, I'm, not, I'm not so much an artist, so I'm just going to use the Unity default sprite. I'll go in there, choose the knob, just like that. Okay, and then this is going to be our background image for the joystick. Now we need an other image on top of that that is going to be the joystick itself. So. I'll right click on this and I will add a new UI image as a children and this is going to be the joystick image. Same thing, I'll use the same image and I will change the color just a little bit. I'll make this more gray, just like that. And then this will be our joystick for the for our game, pretty much. So I, I'll call this canvas the virtual joystick. You don't have to rename, but I just like to have my things ordered. So, what are we supposed to do now? Now we're supposed to create ourselves a script, and I will be creating the script on the background image. So I'll do a had component, a new C sharp script. I'll call this one virtual joystick, and I'll press enter. Okay. So in there, we're going to need a few things. First off, we have some UI involved, so we're going to need to include the using unity engine dot ui and also we're going to be using some uh, cursor events so i'll be using unity engine dot event system as well and since we're going to be using the event system i am going to inherit from some interfaces the first ones being i drag handler second one the i pointer uh, up handler and also the eye pointer down handler. So we're going to keep track of these three events. Uh, let's go ahead and declare ourselves the function, the, the callback function that goes with that right now. So I'll make a public virtual void on pointer down and you have to write this like that. No mistake is allowed. So we're going to receive a pointer event data. I'm going to call it PED. Copy this twice, and I will make sure this one is the pointer event up, on pointer up, and also there is on drag. So we can drag cursor around. So we get these three events now, but um, uh, before we tackle these, I'm actually going to declare myself some uh, fields up here. So private image, background image, also private image joystick image and also a private vector 3 that is going to be the uh, the input vector so private vector 3 input vector let's go declare these or actually let's go assign these in the start so a private void start and in here we'll say background image is equal to get the component image because this script is on our background image now, as for the joystick image, we should say transform.getChild first at the index 0, then get component image. So we're basically just getting the image component from 
the child, which is the joystick, um, the real joystick. All right, so um, I am going to code. Actually, I'm going to move this around. The on drag is going to be first because this is where we're going to be doing most of our stuff. Um, the reason being that. When my pointer is down, I want to be doing the same thing that uh, undrag does, but the reason I'm putting it inside of one undrag is because we're going to be like dragging, this function is going to be called more often, basically. And in the on pointer down function, all I have to do is simply say undrag pd. So I'm basically just redirecting this to the undrag. And as for the pointer up, this is going to be some kind of reset, so we need to leave it there. Uh, for a little bit later on. So, um, what we'll do is, uh, since we are getting a, since we're pretty much just getting uh, all the data we want from the PED, now we just have to find where exactly are you clicking inside of the image. Okay, so now the big function. We're going to start by declaring ourselves a vector two position, and then after that we're going to be using some uh, some big stuff. So, uh, make sure you follow properly. If rec transform utility dot screen point to <laughs> screen point to local point in rectangles so this is a pretty pretty big function and then it asks us uh, what rectangle do we want to test this against so the, f the first rectangle is going to be actually the first and only rectangle is going to be the background image dot rect transform and the reason we're not really using the other one um, is because it, it is only a visual reference so the joystick image is simply going to be there to give feedback to the player we don't really need we don't really need it in the end just to uh, calculate that stuff so this is the first parameter and then the second one is going to be uh, they ask us for a screen point well the pointer event data does gives us that so we can say ped dot position oh not press position but dot position just like that and then below that they ask us for a camera and then they ask us for a camera. PED also gives us that. So if we write PED dot press event camera, we get the camera that was uh, used when we press the mouse button. And then we also want to return this value in our local position uh, field. So out position, just like this. Now remember, this is an if, so we, we open bracket in there if we manage to click on something. First off, let's just make sure that this works. We're going to say debug.log. Hey, what's up? And we are going to test this out real quick. So I press play. My console is clear. I click on my icon and it says, hey, what's up? If I click somewhere else, it's not going to work out. No, it is um, 250 by 250, so I should be able to click around here and get a result out of it. Yep, just like that. And uh, we're going to keep it that way. Okay, so in there now, what we have to do is we have to get the exact uh, area where we clicked, pretty much. We need to get some kind of ratio, so a 0 to 1 value of uh, where we actually click. So to do that, we'll do position.x is now equal to open bracket position.x divided by the size of this image. So background image dot rect transform dot size delta dot x. Now we do the same thing for the y. So position dot y is equal to position dot y divided by background image. I should just copy this, shouldn't I? Okay. There we go. Dot y. Okay. Now now we are getting a zero to one value out of that, but um our our joystick goes in two ways. So, actually, what we're going to do, we're just simply going to debug this. So, debug.log position and take a look at that. So, we press play. What if I click about here? It's going to give us a minus one uh, value. But if I keep going to the center, it gives us a minus 0 0.5. And that's not really what I want. I would like this to be zero and I would like this to be one. But it stops in between minus one and zero, so it's not going to go above that. To make it go above that, we're going to say input vector is now equal to a new vector because we're going to be using the input vector now. Um, is going to equal the equal to a new vector three, and we're going to say position dot x times two 
plus 1, and then 0 for the y. And as for the uh, z, we're going to say position.y times 2 plus, actually minus 1. And you'll understand why I do that in a moment. But as always, let's just go ahead and um, debug that so we see if it makes sense. Press play. And now over here we get minus 0 0.9. In the center we get 0. And at the very end we get 1. Now what about vertical? So if we keep going down that way, we can see that we can achieve some result like minus 1, minus 1 if I click over here. But this is also another problem. We don't want to be able to do minus 1 and minus 1 on a joystick because this is a circular um, well, joystick. We, it's not a square joystick. We, sh we should not be able to do minus 1, minus 1. So basically what we have to do is normalize that vector. Make sure that the vector is no longer uh, ha has a length of pretty much equal or not above 1. To do that, we are going to go ahead and normalize this. So uh, I'll do that in a ternary operator. So input vector is equal to if input vector dot magnitude is bigger than one, then input vector is going to be equal to input vector dot normalize. If not, it is simply going to be equal to itself. So input vector. Okay, now we should have some um, some good result out of that. We should be able to get the proper input out of this. So say we go here and we press. Well, I just removed the debug.log. That's uh, a little bit weird, but um, trust me, it works. We're going to I'm going to show you that it works by moving the joystick image around. So move joystick image, and to move that, we're simply going to say joystick image dot rect transform dot anchored position is equal to a new vector tree and then we'll say input vector dot x um, times actually I should put this on a other line so I'll go here times we open bracket background image dot rect transform dot size dot x divided by two then on the other line, we'll say input vector, well, input, input vector dot z times background image dot rect transform dot size delta dot y and divided by 2, pretty much. We should be able to close this off. And uh, yeah, I know that this is a vector 3, but uh, you can also declare a vector 3 with only two parameters. It's simply not going to fill the, well, it's simply going to make the z 0, pretty much. So let's press play on that, see if it works. And now I'm dragging the mouse around, and I'm simply clicking, and we cannot go past, uh, well, we cannot go beyond one in length. So that's pretty much all we need to do to get a working joystick. If you think that the button uh, looks a little bit weird, that it should not be able to go that far, then you can simply modify these value over here. So pretty much this says the input vector dot x, so the value in between minus one and one, times the uh, size in x of the image. So if you reduce this a bit, so say we do divided by three, then I'll do that in both places. Then I should not be able to go beyond uh, that point on the image. Let's try that. And as you can see, it is now going a little bit less uh, far, but we're, we're getting the same values in the end. So this is the exact same values we are getting in the very end. Now, one thing I'd like to do also is uh, when I, I drop this, so say I release the button like that, I would like this to go back at the beginning, just to, just to reset, basically. So what we'll do is um, we have this function here called on pointer up, and in there I'll simply say, well, first the input vector is going to equal to zero because we're dropping the joystick, and also after that we'll simply say joystick image dot right transform dot anchored position is also equal to vector three dot zero. 
Okay, so we have all these nice functions now that calculate a input vector, but we're not using it anywhere. So I'll show you how to use it uh, using the ball script that I have uh, that I showed you a little bit earlier. So what we'll do is we will create ourselves. For my case, I create myself two float uh, functions. So public float, horizontal, and also a public float vertical. But you could create a, just a single uh, function that returns a vector instead. But for my for my specific case, I need two functions like this. Um, the first one is going to be if input vector dot x is equal actually is not equal to zero. I'm simply going to return the input vector. Oops, the input vector dot x. And the reason I have an if here is uh, because let's say I'm not using that joystick. I want to return something else. I want to return input dot get axis horizontal horizontal for when I'm testing on the PC so that's pretty much why I have this um, if else statement here so I'll do the same thing in the vertical but instead of returning the X I return the Z Z and also the vertical okay so since these two are public what I'll do is I'll go inside my ball function here and uh, before I had this thing going on to get the the input vector now I'll simply declare myself a new public virtual joystick that I call a joystick and I'll take the values from there instead so direction.x I'm going to comment this out direction.x is now equal to joystick dot horizontal and direction.z is now equal to joystick dot vertical okay go back in game I'll choose my ball and then I have to drag and drop my script in there so the background image I drag and drop it inside of my joystick field press play and I'm moving this around and as you can see I am also moving the ball so we get a working joystick so I'm gonna go build this on my phone real quick and I'll be right back with the result Alright, so here we go. This is the build on the phone. The camera could focus a little bit. Here we go. Uh, as you can see, the joystick is over here, and also the ball moves when my finger goes up and down, just like this. And if I wasn't on the, you know, if I wasn't on the wrong side, I could actually see something. But um, yeah, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you learned something. If you have, please leave a like. And also, if you have any question or comment, leave a comment in the section below else you can subscribe for more cool tutorials just like that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.